Good morning. Surprise, everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. <clears throat> Not sure. Some of you may be working. Some of you may be preparing for family cookouts. And some of you may be doing what I'm doing, just chilling, right? So I woke up this morning. I'm an early riser. For those of you who come on and catch me on the replay, say hello. I always <clears throat> come back and comment and um, connect with you all. Uh, my desire this morning um, was that many of you would maybe be off and this would be a great time. But whichever way it happens, whether you catch me live or um, on the replay, I want to have a conversation with you about freedom and what that means to you. And with it being, you know, July 4th, uh, it means different things to different people. We won't even go into to all of that, but it made me think about freedom. And there was a space and time in my life where I would always have this thing on the inside of me and I learned that what it really was was a desire for freedom. So whether it was <clears throat> and how I would create my life, uh, choosing what college to go to. Um, many of us are faced every single day with a decision that puts us in a new space of freedom or in a space of bondage. And for so long, uh, we've been taught, you know, the ideal for, you know, how we should work, how we should earn money, how we should live our lives. And much of my journey has been about freedom. Even my desire for increased income and revenue every year in my business is really about obtaining a measure of freedom. And as you begin to um, earn more revenue and build more wealth in your business, you, you start understanding that it's not so much about the money. So the grit that you put into what you're doing is not even so much about the money as it is the things that allow you personal freedoms. I stepped out to my, my truck to get something this morning and stepped onto my lawn and <clears throat> it was just, you know, pretty. I, I'm really big about nature here lately. Nature is just like my thing. I am... I'm more in tune with all of the beautiful things that have been created for us. And so I step outside to go to my truck and, you know, my lawn was freshly cut yesterday or maybe the day before yesterday. And for me, that's a measure of freedom. It may seem like something really simple, but for years, um, you know, having the grass cut was a chore that was done within our family, not someone that you know we paid to do it and the thing about it is it wasn't because you know we couldn't afford it there was just no agreeance between um, my spouse and I that we should actually pay someone for that so someone else does that task for me now and and it feels amazing and so earning more revenue allows me more freedom to have you know simple things done like that for me a housekeeper um you know having the lawn cut for you it may be you know hiring an assistant in your business you know just thinking about assistant it takes me back to when i owned a brick and mortar business we had um two assistants inside you know the business that helped not only me but my other team members they helped the other team members as well and then we had customer care coordinators and all of those provided all of those people provided a measure of support which allowed me to have more freedom in my life and also allowed me because when we're getting people to help us with things we're also providing something for the person that's actually doing you know the service as well and so those things like getting help uh provide support for me like with a yard, hey Stacy darling, um, you know, close to an acre, it takes you forever to do that. And so if there is something else that you desire to do in your life and you're feeling like I just don't have the time, that's why we continue to increase goals. 
that's why we continue to you know create futures that are bigger than our past it's not about earning more money as much as it is allowing ourselves to have more freedom and so I wanted to talk to you guys about that on this morning if if you're on with me um, let's have a conversation this morning in the comments uh, share it out with someone else who you feel would be interested in this topic so we're gonna talk about what freedom means to you and while I know Facebook has a lag but while I'm sharing I would love to know what freedom looks like to you I I actually so you guys on Facebook you know we get memories and one of the memories that popped up for me today I had asked the question what does freedom mean to you and one of the people in the comments said hmm let me think about that so I realized that many of us have not clearly thought about what freedom means to us so on today while we're on even if I'm not on that particular question and it just actually comes up for you what freedom means to you put that in the comments uh, for those of you you've never been on a live broadcast with me before and you're like who's this lady I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry I am a transformational growth strategist business consultant and certified life coach so my clients that work with me get their whole life um, they receive a full circle experience as far as business is concerned, I focus on branding the business, building and finding new profit strategies for my clients. And branding is huge for me with my clients because my beliefs about branding is it starts with understanding who you are. And for those of you who are looking for a measure of freedom in your life and in your business, defining clearly who you are is going to be the first and foremost thing because so many business owners are running businesses they don't love they're living lives that they don't love they're in relationships that they don't love and it's because they haven't given themselves the freedom to, to one tell the truth to themselves about what's transpiring in their life and business and and two they haven't given themselves permission and many of us don't give ourselves permission to really step into a space of freedom because of all of the things that we've heard. This is how society says you need to do it. This is what society says the ideal business is, the ideal relationship is. I have one, uh, well, I have several clients that come to mind when I'm thinking about freedom and how really, really learning who they are helped them to create the business that they love. So what they do for the marketplace they do it with ease because it's natural to them for me um, a new level of freedom came when I went to a conference maybe about what eight years ago now seven or eight years ago and I cried profusely because of questions that were asked to me that brought a new level of revelation about me about who I am and it gave me freedom to do things differently so many times when we're in a specific industry like the salon industry the coaching industry um, for those of you who are personal stylists uh, you do some type of specific service to a customer there's usually a culture for that particular industry and we usually stay so locked inside you know how that normally goes for instance those of you in the salon industry go to hair school you get your license you know maybe you work at a commission salon so many people don't do that now which I think is a disadvantage um, because there's so many foundational things that a person can learn when they actually work for someone who does what they aspire to do they get um, systems and strategies that they don't normally get or if they get them working on their own it takes them so much longer um, so the pattern may be you know to go work for someone and then to open a salon and it's not everybody's dream to open a salon so so many people have opened a business whether it's a restaurant right because they love to cook um, I get so many people who uh, are in a particular industry who want to go back and become an educator in that industry uh, like they want to go get their instructor's license or they want to go back to college and get a degree to teach in that specific area and I'm always giving them another option not telling them what to do but another option 
for instance, many of you are at a space in your career where you really have developed a skill set and you would be amazing at being the solution for someone else to be able to teach that skill set. And that's what I do with my clients. I help them not only develop their business brand, but also develop their personal brand. So many self-employed business owners get to a space in their business where they're like, I mean, I, I don't know what to do next. I, I feel like I'm in bondage to what I'm doing now. And most often it's because they've evolved and their business hasn't evolved with them. And many times, guys, it's because they haven't given themselves the freedom to be able to do it differently. So I want you to take a moment, even while we're on the broadcast, and really decide what <clears throat> does freedom <clears throat> I'm sorry guys, I have allergies and when the grass is cut and all that good stuff, it, it shows up. So ask yourself, what does freedom really look like to you? So most people feel that freedom means that you can do whatever it is that you want to do. And right, to, right now, none of you are limited from doing anything that you want to do nothing so even if it's um unlawful which we don't do unlawful stuff but you can go do it you have the freedom to go do it and and what happens is when we're thinking about freedom and we think about it from a space of i just want to do anything that i want to do we often limit ourselves from actually obtaining the freedom because freedom comes from putting certain things in place that allow you new levels of freedom. For instance, if your goal is a housekeeper, if, if your goal is you know someone to do your lawn care for you, that means you set a new goal to earn more revenue, which doesn't mean you have to work harder so that you can have someone to do those things for you. And that's going to give you the freedom, but there's still something you have to do in that. So one, if you're looking to really get freedom in your life and your business, you got to make a decision. You have to make a decision. That's what happened with me. I decided, you know, I would hear so many people saying, you can't do it that way, or why don't you do it this way? And this way is normally what the average person is doing. And if you guys really, really take a look at what the average person is doing, most of them are living in bondage and not freedom right and so we're aspiring to do things that are putting us in bondage because of you know the way society says it has to be done or the way we've possibly seen it done before but you have to make a decision here's a few places you got to make a decision if you really want freedom in your relationships in your relationships some of you got to sit down and be really honest with yourself about the relationships that you have whether they're intimate friendships you got to be honest. If you're not happy, if it ain't working, you got to do something different. You have the freedom to do that. And many of us stay in unproductive relationships, friendships, business circles um, that really aren't producing for us because we are oper we're not operating from a space of abundance. So something on the inside of us tells us there's not anything else. There's nothing more. There's nothing greater. Or we won't do better one you got to make a decision in your relationships if you aren't moving to your next level in your business the way you desire to you need a new business circle you need a new community and nobody is just gonna come and say hey come and join our community right um, and even if they invite you in there's an expectation that you'll be able to bring something to the community so at the space and time where you're ready for new relationships I remember this uh, statement that my pastor shared with me years ago they said your relationships are a direct reflection of your ability to make right choices to make good choices so you have to be at the point in your life where you're willing to make better choices even about your relationships and give yourself permission to do that number two you got to make a decision about your income you got to make a decision you got to sit down and say this income that I am currently earning is not giving me the freedom that I really desire how many times have you know many of you may do well in your careers you know that that come on so how many times have you sat down and said oh you know I'm okay I'm comfortable and then life hits 
and you like whoa wait a minute i i need to be at a new space this is where this is why i think it's so important for us to continue to grow because life does happen right and life will show you that you when you've been settling it will show you every single time when you've been settling something will happen um, there'll be like a setback and this is how <clears throat> mediocrity happens in our life we have a good week or a good month in our business and we get really comfortable that's how mediocrity it sets in that's how we end up not shooting and pushing for um, an expanded vision or a bigger vision and having a bigger vision and wanting to earn more revenue is not about the money guys it's about the freedom that it allows you to have it's about the things that you want to do for your parents. It's about the things that you want to do for yourself. Um, many of you see opportunities as in the retreat that I'm hosting. And you know that it's ideal for you. But because of previous things that you may have gotten comfortable, you may not have been in a position where you could immediately go ahead and invest. Right? So freedom is when you are preparing because you know what it is that you desire for your future so that when opportunities come your way that you know you need you're able to take advantage of them freedom in your work life one of the things um, I also thought about when I stepped out to my car was how I have the opportunity to I didn't even think about work on today Hey, Letitia, how are you, darling? I didn't think about work on today. Now, many of my um, associates or people that I know are in the hair industry, and many of them still do hair full-time for a living. And so um, I was actually on the phone with one of my friends, and I forgot. I forget sometimes that uh, people are still deciding, am I going to go to work on a holiday, right? Many service-based you know, businesses they're deciding, am I going to physically go and service someone on a holiday? And I was just so grateful for that measure of freedom that I have in my life and my business now. So many of you are wondering, how am I going to transition, right? How am I going to transition from where my hands are always in a customer? I, I'm in bondage to the business that I'm doing, right? And so freedom is setting up your life so that you're not in bondage to how you earn revenue, how you earn income. I'm on my way, half day, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And so freedom is about making a decision. Somebody put decision in the comments. You gotta make a decision, right? And then you can't like go back and forth with the decision because you lose momentum every time you dumb down or back down on the decision. Somebody put make a decision in the comments. That's the first way. Good morning, I see you guys joining. Put your name in the comments, say hello um, this morning. That's the first way you're gonna earn freedom, guys, is if you make a decision. Number two, you will have to fight for your freedom. You will have to fight for your freedom. Freedom isn't free. Fighting for it may be fighting those thoughts in your mind. Many of you, the biggest fight that you have is in your mind, fear. The biggest fight that you have is in your mind, and it's fear. So if you're going to step into a new space of freedom, remember I said you got to make decisions in your relationships. A lot of y'all ain't happy in your relationships. Mm -mm. But you don't feel you have the freedom you don't feel that you deserve more. You got to have, you got to fight for your freedom. Up here first, up here first. It has to be a decision. Remember I said you got to, you got to fight for your freedom in your income. So yesterday was my normal schedule broadcast time. So I normally schedule, I normally broadcast 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Monday and Wednesday. And... I got up about 3.30 in the morning and I've been spending like extra time and space with God and, you know, um, in prayer and things of that nature. And I heard the Holy Spirit so clear uh, share with me to reshare a training I did on a poverty mindset. 
And so I shared that yesterday for those of you who didn't catch it. If you did catch it, put me in the comments. I want to know who was able to see that series on a poverty mindset. It was actually something that I shared um, about three years ago now. But I was led to reshare that yesterday as my normal scheduled um, broadcast. And guys, when I began to learn that some of the thoughts that I was thinking were wealthy thoughts were actually poverty thinking, right? Um, I've been studying wealth for years as I move forward in, in my progression for financial freedom. Uh, one, for me, so if you know my story, you know I opened my salon debt-free after having this um, encounter with what I call an angel. So I went home, I shifted, I did things completely different as far as my spending. But the biggest thing that happened for me that allows me allowed me a new measure of freedom is what I spent my money on. Lord have mercy, y'all don't hear me. So oftentimes, in, in one of the studies, I remember them talking about how poor people spend a lot of money at the dollar stores buying a lot of really inexpensive items that normally break. They normally end up being a lot of stuff, just stuff, you know, around the house that has no value. When I learned the difference in just spending money and spending money on value, and value are things that give you a return. So many people have a hard time making that decision. Let's use today for, for an example. So the tradition for many families of, of our um, ethnicity is to have big, huge cookouts on the 4th, right? And oftentimes the person hosting it might not even be in the best financial position but because this is tradition because this is what we do every holiday they have difficulty saying no to that instant gratification the fun the enjoyment that they'll have in that moment in order to i mean most people are going to spend five hundred dollars or more preparing for a fourth of july cookout right and I value family, guys. I think it is so important. But when you are stepping into a space of freedom where there are other things that you want to be able to continuously do in your life, you got to make different decisions, even about things that have become tradition. So maybe you say, I'm not spending the $500 on a cookout this year there is something I need to invest in that's actually going to position me to earn more money and then I can have as many cookouts as I want without being stressed about it after I host it or have it or whatever the case is. This is how you step into a space of freedom. You learn what to say no to. Guys, I had, in order for me to um, open my brick and mortar business debt-free, I actually, in a two-year time frame, saved over $10,000, open debt-free, um, my business, I had to say no to a lot of stuff. This was, I'm a girl that used to hop on the plane to go shopping, right? Um, now, I would take educational classes and everything, but I wasn't investing to the measure that I needed to invest in getting the information for my business because I was spending it on stuff that I was actually sick when I moved and I attempted to have a yard sale to sell some things because it was way too much stuff to even take with me. Um, I had Versace pants with tags on it, um, Gucci, you name it. Um, jeans that I had paid, you know, I, maybe they were 169 Versace jeans back then, I don't know, $200. And at the yard sale, I had to sell them for $30. Right, the return on the investment was just terrible. And there, it was so much that I still had things left. And when I added up all of the money that I had spent on things that were not allowing me freedom, they were only allowing me momentary um, satisfaction. Y'all put me in the comments if you understand what I mean. If, if you feel me, maybe you have done that at some point in your life, or maybe that's something that you have to take a look at now because you want a new measure of freedom in your life and you realize that some of the things you've been spending your money on don't don't really allow you freedom they don't really allow you freedom they allow you momentary 
um, satisfaction. And when I talked about the poverty mindset or the poverty spirit, you know, oftentimes it will, it may be someone who earns a really great income, but what they spend their money on, it's really not changing the trajectory of their life. It's really not moving them to a new neighbor, a better neighborhood for their children to be able to attend a different type of school. It's really not changing the, the actual quality and freedom in their life. Letitia said, um, I learned how to break away from tradition. Oh my goodness. As a culture, we pass down a poverty mindset. It needs to stop. Thanks for the broadcast. We do, and it's not, I think so often we don't even notice it because it's just what we do on a continuous basis. I see people all the time um, who have connected with me to invest and maybe the investment is anywhere from five hundred to two thousand dollars, and um, and they'll say, you know, it's just not a good time for them. And then you see them go on a cruise or a vacation, and then next year their life is completely the same. And it's almost as if we can't take a moment to give up the instant gratification that we get. You know, maybe we get to show a picture on social media, you know, as if we're balling. Did I say that? Right? But then we're going back to our same situation like every single year. It's a it's a poverty mindset. And um, it's a spirit, guys. It's, it's really a spirit. I'm not going to go too far into um, <clears throat> that aspect of it. But a lot of things that we've done traditionally, a lot of things that we've heard about how we spend money, what wealth really looks like, does not offer us a measure of freedom. It actually keeps us in bondage to that cyclic um, lifestyle. So we have to make a decision about what we want our finances to look like, what we want our work life to look like. Do I want to have to work every single holiday or would I like to you know, have the option of, you know, I'm not working this holiday and I'm fine, right? I'm not working this holiday and I'm fine. Or, um, now, of course you all know, I, I still have spaces left for my retreat. And I would love for you all uh, to be there. But I want you guys who feel like you're not in a position to come. This is what I shared with my mastermind members, which the majority of them will, will be at the retreat as well. But I said, when you really sit down and look at your life and you have an event that you really want to go to and attend... And it's 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 a thousand it's a thousand dollars it's only a thousand dollars and you can't do it. Those are signs that says I'm living in some type of bondage because I'm not able to invest in something I think I really need. Um, I can't afford to fake it. Ignorance is expensive. It's so expensive, guys. And when we hear the word ignorance, we may take offense to it, but ignorance is simply when we don't know any better. So my assignment is to bring an awareness to mediocrity, right? Because we have actually co-signed to mediocrity and it never gets us anywhere. We can look at different areas of our life where we feel we really deserve more, right? And we say, you know, I've been living mediocre. I've been doing things in a, in a mediocre fashion. So we have to make a decision. And then remember I said, you got to fight for it. So fighting for it for you, maybe saying no to certain things so that you can do the things that are actually going to get you to the next level. It's about making choices, um, not feeling obligated to certain traditions. I talk about Christmas all the time because sometimes we go out and we spend so much money on holidays and you know and it's the same thing every year then we spend the next year trying to you know pay it off we have not been taught to invest in things that will really take us to the next level so you know when we're making trade-offs in our life and what we're making investments on that aren't getting us to the next level we're, we're making trade-offs like all the time and I shared with you all how um, getting in a space, freedom is when you learn to spend money on what's valuable. That's going to give you another measure of, of freedom. So for me, spending a few hundred dollars a month to get someone to do my lawn care is valuable for me because my time. So if someone comes to get a 
a strategy, a business strategy session with me or a um, business assessment to figure out what the gaps are in their business so they can really soar in their business. That's it's five hundred dollars. So it's a waste of my time to go out and be trying to cut grass. <laughs> right. When I could be on a call that would actually bring revenue into my life. And, and most of us have not really looked at our time in a quantifiable measure. Do you guys get what I mean? So, for instance, those of you who provide a service to a customer and maybe your average, you know, ticket might be $100. Would it behoove you to have someone to answer the phone, set up the appointments, um, to assist you, and you can actually do more of those 100 500 I have clients who have services that are $4,500, so I was trying to be fair in that, but many of my clients have services well over $500. So once they finish coaching with me, we've increased their value and we've positioned them in front of the people who actually will make the exchange for their value. And I have clients who physically have services that are $4,500 per service. So when I said $100, please don't limit yourself. Please do not limit yourself. And this is one of the things that I do with my clients. I help them step into a new space of possibility and a new space of expansion. So many of you who are coming on who provide a service to a customer, when you hear $4,500, it doesn't even register to you. Because traditionally, $65, $85, maybe $100 is a normal seat for you. But when I say a service that a person is exchanging $4,500 with you, it may be far beyond what you have been exposed to before. But I'm here to tell you that it is possible. And this is one of the reasons why I cannot wait until our retreat. Because I am going to show people where that value is in their business and then give them the strategy to make it happen. And it's not something they're gonna have to you know, do for a year in order to create those new areas of revenue and new areas of time freedom in their life. And so the people who are coming, for some of them it's sacrificial, right? They're making the trade um, on something else they might have wanted to do that would have only been instant gratification for something that's going to continue to bring them revenue over and over and over again over and over and over again so you got to fight for it it means it may mean that you can't you you have to pick specific people that you watch on social media and and that's it and this is why i say this so i uh recently um in my prayer time i was prompted to purge from social media for three days so i could you know, bring awareness to my business. I could check on my customers, but I could only watch people who um, delivered a measure of faith or some type of influence for my next level. Guys, do you know there were only about three people who, when I looked at their posts or what they were talking about, could actually do that? And when I finished with the purge or the fast from social media, I was like, man, you know, I think social media has its benefits tremendously but when you are really set on getting a new measure of freedom you have to fight for your attention for what keeps your attention for what distracts you for for what you do idly with your time i was reading a um i think it was from huffington post maybe where they talked about um the life expectancy for you know the average american uh, person is about 80 years and 26 don't quote me on it right i did um write some things down years of that time is used sleeping 11 years of that time is used um watching a screen whether it's a television screen or um you know uh, Facebook or, or something of that nature. 11 years? It calculated over that lifespan, 11 years. So for me, if I am going to spend my valuable time, right, it's going to be only on things that are going to help me get to the next level. 
that increase my faith, that increase my um, my personal growth, that increase my, my business growth. I'm not spending my time on trivial stuff. And I used to pride myself in the fact that um, although I would share on social media, I wasn't doing a lot of scrolling, but the time, that three-day purge that I did show me that although I wasn't doing a lot, even the scrolling that I was doing on social media wasn't profitable to me. And the more you get aligned with getting a new level of freedom in your life, the more serious you get about what you do with your time, how you invest your time. Um, Letitia says, I would love to go to your retreat. Um, I'll catch it next time I'm investing in my trichology certification at the moment. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I work with so many, um, I've worked with at least four to five trichologists who have their certification but didn't know how to, um, to market it, how to earn the revenue from it. And I talked about this, I think on yesterday where I shared how I had gained something new in my, um, business a piece of equipment and it took me years to recap it because I you got to take the time to market it to someone you got to find the customer you, you know all of those things and so awareness um, is simply knowing like when and where to invest your time your money and your energy and that is where you are fighting for your freedom it is a fight there's so many distractions, guys. And many of us are doing things that we think are profitable in our business that aren't profitable. They're making us work harder. At the end of the year, we've produced the same revenue. Um, you know, so maybe we added one more thing, but it, it wasn't really prosperous, right? So you gotta fight for your freedom. Number three, only you can define what freedom is for you. So many of you have allowed society to define what freedom looks like to you. One of the things we'll do at the retreat, I'm going to be, I have a, a couple um, modules or, or tools that I've created that I'll be walking my clients through that is going to change the trajectory of their life and their business completely. That's one promise. You know how you, you say you can't, really promise certain things. That's one promise that I'm making for uh, the retreat. Their life is going to change uh, because it's the things that changed my life. It changed how I was looking at things. When they look at how they're spending their time in their business and what they can do differently and just really earn more revenue, I literally have a client, guys. And this is why I just thank God so much because really how you're going to earn money in the marketplace is providing a solution for someone. We're going to talk about some of the ways to bring prosperity into your life too because prosperity brings another measure of freedom. But um, gosh, how did I lose that, that train of thought? Well, I know I was sharing that only you can define it. And so many of you are running your business. It's not, you don't even like it. <laughs> You don't even like it. You dread it. You're at the point where you don't know how you're going to create an exit strategy. You don't know how you're going to transition. Um, you're saying, I, I can't do it this way for the rest of my life. You're looking at your business like, yes, you know, the revenue is coming in, but the way that I'm having to earn the revenue is not what I want to do anymore. So this is what I'm going to help my clients to step into new spaces. One of, the, one of our recent coaching calls, my client has like, when I tell you guys, she's got like a million dollar brand easily. But do you know what was holding her back? And this is why coaching and consulting is so important. And those that get to work with me, I feel blessed because many of us need life coaching. We need to figure out how we want to do our life. And my clients get to get the full circle. But my client was battling with fear. She was battling with fear. She said, I know that if I do that thing you share with me to do, I know it's going to work, but I'm so afraid that I'm going to be super busy. But what I'm doing at the retreat is not only sharing with people how they can earn more revenue, but how they can do it with more time freedom. And so I gave her a strategy. I said, what you're afraid of, many of us are spending so much time 
trying to figure out how we're going to get the freedom, that we won't define what freedom even looks like to us and really make a decision to stick to it because we're worried about the how. But when you're aligned with getting your freedom and you're re really uh, ready to fight for your freedom, when you're really ready, the how is going to show up with every step that you take. Every step that, and, and many of you are so comfortable, you're uncomfortable in your comfortableness. But when you're willing to get uncomfortable, when you're willing to stop uh, investing on the same level even. Guys, I'm telling you, when you invest on a, this is what happens when you invest on a different level. For me too. It makes you show up differently. Letitia, you said you invested in your psychology uh, certification. Does it make you show up differently? I'm not talking about just in, the, in what you're learning in the class, but it makes you handle your business on a different level because you, you got to make that investment to get that new piece of information. And many of you are investing so small, it doesn't require you to become anything else, to do anything different in order to make the investment. So there's something that happens when you're fighting for your freedom and you're willing to be uncomfortable, even in your investments, it changes how you show up because you know you gotta make that thing happen. And so, so many people are in bondage uh, to the poverty mindset of how they're investing and that level of investing is not requiring them to do anything else but stay comfortable. It's like a, an easy investment. So we don't change, we don't grow, we don't become anything else. And when you invest on a different level, it's going to make you show up differently, guys. And one of the reasons you're continuously, you're continuously feeling like you're in bondage is because nothing that you're doing is requiring you to show up any different. I have a 6K program. I have a 6K program with, uh, my, for my mastermind members. Do you know they show up differently? If any of you have seen them on social media exploding, right, continuously getting opportunities, it's because the investment required them to show up differently. They had to get uncomfortable to meet the investment. Y'all don't hear me. So many of you are in bondage and you're not stepping into a space of freedom because you're, whatever you're investing or however you're sowing, it's, it's so easy. It's simple. It doesn't require anything. Um, Letitia, Letitia says, I'm looking at my career so differently. Listen, and I promise you, you're showing up in the things that help you to earn revenue differently. Am I correct? Are you showing up differently in the areas that require you to, to earn revenue because you've made an investment? Listen, it changes. And this is what this is what tradition keeps us in bondage to not knowing that level of information of how just actually doing it. So and fear, man, fear will punk your destiny. Fear will punk you out of your destiny. Many of you are overqualified for the next level. You're overqualified, but fear won't allow you to step into the space, maybe even to just see how it's supposed to be done. I mean, you, you have the vision, you have the, <clears throat> the talent, you have the idea or the brand, but fear won't allow you to step in the space to see how it's supposed to be done and how is always that question that's going in the back of your mind get the answers that you need so that you can step into new levels of freedom and only you can define what success looks like for you so maybe success to you isn't working 10 to 12 hours in your business and you're here pe hearing people say well you know if you want it you, you gotta go do more no now I do understand there's a, a time if you're new to the industry, but most of the people who follow me are seasoned in the industry. So there are different things that you do at the growth stage, the seed stage, the place of expansion. And the place of expansion is, is where most of, most of you are either in the growth stage or place of expansion. And this is what happens in the space of expansion. Two things. You either expand or you decline. When it's time to either grow or expand your business, one of two things happens. You either grow 
you either expand or you decline. I mean, you can look in your industry right now and you see it all the time with people who've been in it forever and they just like fall off of the industry, right? Because when, when they were in a space where it was time for expansion, right? They were too afraid to do it differently or they were ignorant to the fact that they could even do it differently. And so they start going into this decline because they're burned out. They're battling this mental thing every single day with they don't want to do it the way they've been doing it anymore. Right. Some of us, sometimes we deal with pride in in certain areas because we are so great, because we do do things so well. We often feel like getting support or getting help or or asking someone, you know, to help us is it's not going to feel right or whatever the case may be, whatever, you know, traditionally we've been taught in our mindset about, you know, getting help. And so we, we make the exchange and we decline because eventually guys, when you continue to make efforts over and over and over again, and you don't see results. Yeah. That's why people bow out of their industry. That's why people bow out of owning businesses. Because when it was time to grow or expand, they ended up declining, right? Because, I, and especially in our culture, especially in our culture, we've been taught that if we don't get out there and do it hard and do it all by ourselves, we, we got this thing in our mind like, well, I don't want anybody to know, you know, I've been doing this for so many years. I shouldn't need any help. I call BS. Everybody <laughs> needs help for what they don't know. Everybody. I call BS on the mindset that is telling you that, you know, I've been in this so long. I shouldn't need help. No, it's not the truth. It's, it's time. See, what happens is when you get to that place of expansion and you don't get help that's when the decline comes in that's when people go out of business breaks my heart um, I spoke with a young lady who I spoke with one year ago who needed help who is now closing her business didn't get the help didn't get the help I could have given her one strategy that would have changed the trajectory of the way she did her business and at this point she would have been soaring right but where we could be soaring, it turns into suffering, right? Because of our thinking, because of our mindset, because what we've been taught about, you know, I, I'm a solo. I've been doing this on my own lies from the enemy. Mm -hmm. He, it's no different from believers, you know, how, you know, maybe God will bless us and then we'll stop praying. We'll stop, you know, all of the things that we did to get to that level because we feel like I got it now. But we were designed to always be in some type of relation. God has, you know, created this thing so that you're going to need some help. Whether your help is an assistant in your business, like if you need an assistant, I know that you're probably looking at the money, but the help, the support is going to allow your business to earn more revenue, right? It's, it's no different from those of you investing to come to the retreat. That's support. That's help for your next level. And if you never move from the space, you'll stay in bondage if you never move from the space of where you look at money as spending as opposed to investing. Because many people are spending, which is why they look at it like spending. Remember we talked about the little Dollar Tree thing? You know how you know you go to Dollar Tree and you buy 50000 or something as opposed to maybe just taking that and buying one item of value that's going to last you over and over again. That's investing. And we have to switch how we're thinking about spending. Uh, I was sharing with you guys in my studies about building wealth. I see articles where people would say people spend $2,000 to go to the Bahamas, but they won't spend it on information and charge it. But they won't do the same thing for information that is actually going to take them to the next level. Um, it's, it's a poverty mindset. I share with you guys how there were so many things I didn't realize that I thought I was doing, right, that were wealthy decisions that were the way a poverty mindset would do it. A, a wealth mindset and a poverty mindset is going to do life differently. They're going to do life differently. Um, number four, number four, as it relates to your freedom, it must be protected. 
And I share with you guys how I was led to purge from social media. That was just God protecting my progress. Yes, protecting my time, protecting my energy, protecting what I, you know, gave my time to. You got to protect your freedom. Once, Remember I said you got to make a decision. What does freedom look like to you? In your relationships, listen, 85% of the success that you receive in your life and your business <clears throat> is going to be connected to the quality of your relationships. And many of you have to stop being dishonest, stop lying to yourself about the relationships you have. Whether it's friendships, intimate, listen, they're vehicles to get you to the next level. And then when you're desiring new levels of uh, a business community or business relationships even, you got to be willing to operate at a higher version of yourself so that you're bringing something to whatever this new ideal of a relationship is that you have. But guys, you guys, you got to be really honest. The stuff that you don't like in your life, you got to say, I really don't like this. <clears throat> this is not what I want. No, this is not what I want. This is not God's best for my life. It's not God's best. And then I said, you got to fight for it. And one of the biggest things you fight is the fear for the next move. That's the biggest thing. It, it'll, go, it'll play in your head. All of the things. A person operating in fear will always sit and contemplate all the things that could go wrong if they made the next move. Think about your thinking. It'll come in. It'll tell you all the stuff that could go wrong. But if we're really realistic, some of you need to make a move so much so that if you don't make the move, you, you already know, I can't continue to operate like this. I, I can't do it anymore. Many of you are at that space. You know it, but you're just going through the routine. And, and doing the same thing, it's not, going, it's not going to shift. Things are going to change in the world, but your decision to grow, to step into a new space, to expand, to operate in your faith and not your fear, that's going to be a decision. You, that's choice. That's something you have to make. Next way you're going to step into a new space of freedom is letting go. Guys, freedom, I learned that freedom was first about the things that I was willing to let go of. The, the mindsets, the traditions, the things that I was doing continuously. Ego. Listen, your ego is where you stay in a space of competition. These, these are things that go on with the ego. Revenge. Mm -hmm. Negative emotions. All of this is ego related, guys. Um, Self-doubt. Self-pity. All of those, those things are ego. Those are things you got to let go of. You got to step into a space of expansion and new possibility and that stuff can't go with you. It, I can't tell you guys how much the ego will slow us up. The ego will have you so concerned about what other people think. Or what other people will think if it doesn't quite go the way that you, you wanted it to go. Or you wanted them to feel it, it, it would go. Fear. Fear. And there are some things that are simply going to only transpire when you're in action for, for greater. They're not going to happen in your regular, everyday, normal routine. That's not where freedom is. So yesterday, I lost my um, license, credit card, uh, a whole lot of stuff. And I've only lost a card like once, <laughs> you know, license and things like that. Um, and it wasn't even my license, but that was uh, last year when I was moving. So I've been in a home for 14 years that I owned and I moved and in packing and doing an event, I lost a card. So this would be the second time. And how, of course, how it happened is because I lost it, but I detailed the events. So I went to an event last Saturday and I changed purses. How many of you ladies changed purses? 
you know, when you go to a different event. So I have a purse that I just, you know, carry just pretty much all throughout the week. Nice little leather bag, keep all my stuff in it. And periodically, if I'm going to something different, it may require me to have, you know, a much smaller bag. So I have like this little silver case that I usually keep like gift cards and things like that in. But I took the gift cards out and put like my license and credit card and things like that in it so that I could stick it in a smaller purse. Now, this was last Saturday. Now, because I was out of my normal routine and so many people will not gain a level of freedom because they won't get a routine. But because I was out of my normal routine, when I took the case in the store with me, I just left it sitting on the counter because it wasn't in my routine. So my routine is the thing that allows me freedom. I'm going to give you guys an example. Now, let me say this. I, I retract that I'd only gone to one store, but I had gone to, I had driven to a whole nother city before I realized that I didn't have it. And when I went back, you know, it was there. Praise God, everything. And I have notifications, so if somebody had tried to use it, I would have at least seen the notifications. So I got no notifications for my cards or anything. So praise God, you know, it was there. But because I was out of my norm, my routine is what gives me freedom. Now, me stepping outside of my routine and changing it and putting it in another person, then not putting it back, this is why I talk about systems all the time, right? It would have caused me, had it not been there, I would have had to call so many places and try to remember what card I had um, bills automated on. You know, it would have required me to go to uh, DMV to get a new license, call the credit, all of those things. And this is what happens to most people on a regular basis because there is no routine in their life. So there's a constant, you know, I can't remember, I can't find, I don't know because there is no routine. And many of us, you know, who are service in the service-based uh, industry, we're artsy, we're creative, and we're free-spirited, and we're free-flowing. But in actuality, some of that lack of having right systems and structures, not just in our business, but in our life, cause us to constantly put out fires. So had my information not have been there, I would have been putting out a whole lot of fires that I really don't even have time for. So many people aren't reaching the level of freedom that they really desire because there are really no real systems in place, whether it's in their life. You may have one for work, so I go to work from this time to that time. But your life and your business, they intertwine. And whatever goes on in your life rolls over into your business. And having an amazing routine is going to offer you a new measure of freedom. It's going to save you time, I'm telling you. And that's one of the big things um, we're going to be working on in the beginning at the retreat is really, you know, um, setting up a, a really clear vision and steps for your life and your business. It's going to offer new measures of freedom to people they've never experienced. Guys, I'm walking in a measure of freedom that I, I haven't experienced before because I learned that I could do it differently and then I fought for it. As in, remember I said, it's got to be protected. You got to fight for it and it's got to be protected because there's so many things that is fighting for our attention. So many distractions that are seemingly good distractions, but they aren't great for our destiny, our vision, our dream, or the measure of freedom that we really desire to have. It's a lot of stuff fighting. It's fighting for your destiny. Those distractions are fighting for your destiny. And many people just aren't clear on, on what, it, what freedom really looks like to them. And then the, the fear won't allow them to really fight for it or, or walk in and step into new spaces. So remember I said we have to let go. And one of the biggest things we have to let go is what people think. Because when you decide to do your life different, to do your business different, Everybody not going to agree because you're going to be doing things that they're not the way your family has seen it done before or even the people in your immediate circle. They haven't seen it done that way. It's unheard of to them to do life that way because so many of us are living mediocre. But we, we, we think we're winning. 
But when we get home, the, when we get, I'm going to tell you one of the key indicators. When you get home and nobody's there but you and you're thinking the real thoughts like, I, I don't like how this is going. I don't, I don't like how I'm running my business. I don't like the results. I know what it looks like, but I don't like the results. Right? So passion, purpose, and prosperity is what most people need in order to really move into new spaces of, of business. And this is why I say purpose. I do believe there is a stage in our business where we need something we can play with now. We need some money, some coins, some cheddar. We need to secure that bag because we just have things that have to be taken care of. I get that. But when you move into a space of purpose, which is what I help my clients to do, to see how they are a bigger solution for the marketplace, for the world. When you step into a space of purpose, what you're doing now has a cause or a mission outside of yourself. And wealth comes because you've learned how to help more people with value and a solution. So when you are able to, many of you know that you have a purpose that's bigger than the chair, bigger than the clothes you're selling, bigger than, you know, the videos, whatever it is you do, whatever type of service you, you know that your purpose is bigger than that. And you have to give yourself permission to operate your business with purpose. Um, prosperity is when you're uh, flourishing and thriving, F flourishing and, and thriving. And here's some ways that prosperity is going to bring you new measures of freedom. What you're offering in the marketplace, make it simple. Make it simple. When I first, um, well, not when I first came online, because when I first came online, I actually uh, worked with industries outside of the salon industry, and I've come full circle now uh, to working with other uh, service-based business owners, coaches, you know, and salon pros. But I, every time I turn around, I was trying to do a new class or, and I mean, it's, it's a lot. When you got to put your hands in a whole lot, guys, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of in, um energy and my greatest income has come from simplifying my life so one of the things I do with my clients um, who work with me whether it's a business assessment um, we're also gonna definitely be doing this at the retreat is simplifying what they do so they can become super focused so they can step into spaces of mastery it increases your value if you're doing 50 things you're never going to be like super valuable to 500 people. There's a sphere of influence designed for you. That's one of my superpowers is to help people see, get clarity on who they are, who they are as a brand and who that ideal person is that can help them and then give them the resources and the strategy to connect to, to them um, and show them their value. Simplifying. The simpler I make what I do in my business, the more I'm able to focus on giving value, the more valuable I am to the marketplace. That's a measure of freedom. Simplify. I'm telling, trying to tell y'all, it ain't 50 different things. It's not 50 different things. Um, one of the things for 2020 that I'm doing is simplifying my stuff so sweetly so I can't wait um, and it's not that I'm waiting on 2020 I've given myself the time to be able to you know put things together uh, in that measure where it doesn't interfere with the things that I'm doing now so I've given myself time to prepare um, help your customers save time this is how you're creating a new level of value that's gonna give you a new level of freedom where is it that you can save your customers time one of the things that was huge for me um as a service-based well i'm still service-based but as a stylist um was that i really really valued the time that my clients had to spend with me my clients are busy 
people are people are busy in the world whether they're busy doing productive stuff or they they just want to get to whatever it is they want to get to you know time is valuable and you do that by you know mastering what it is that you do mastering your systems systems help you save time in your business that allow you to save the customer time it's systems you know when you got wait <laughs> systems help you to help your clients save time and that brings another level of value to you and prosperity which allows you another level of freedom um, as it relates to the products and services that you do remove the fear from the customers so many of you are well people aren't buying from me have you shown them that whatever it is that you offer works this is gonna work for them right remove the fear for the customers get results get results I think sometimes when we set out to to try you know I see for instance like the young lady who had millions of followers on Instagram and couldn't sell 36 t-shirts right it's because although she may have had great things to say nobody ever saw any results so whatever is in your hand now become exceptional at getting results right that's gonna bring you another level of prosperity another level of prosperity um, make it so that people can trust you and guys trust when you're building a business is not just in the service that you give them right it's also in your systems so this was probably maybe last year um, my booking site uh, I had signed up so that I could get SMS notifications on my phone and it wasn't working properly on their end so I had like two people to sign up that I missed because I didn't get the notification I'm not always on my PC but I had paid to have the SMS sent to my phone and it wasn't working right so the customer who's coming to me doesn't know that I am consistent, that I am trustworthy, that I show up, that it's part of my brand because they scheduled an appointment with me that I didn't see because of the system. Yeah, I don't hear me. This is why I talk about systems so much because many of you can't move past the fact that you know you're a great stylist or massage therapist or a personal stylist or whatever. You can't move past that enough to see that it's not that you aren't, but the systems that you have in place is also part of the experience that your customers are seeing that dictates your prosperity. You guys get that? You guys get This is why I talk about systems all the time and people, you know, just going to willy-nilly it. <laughs> just going to randomly. But listen, people who are looking for value, they're looking for something different. And they got to get through all of your avenues of connection before they ever get to come and experience that you are so great. And that's your systems. That's your systems. Um, you either have to have something that's going to save them money or earn them more money. Save them money or earn them more money. Now, many of you who provide a service to your customers... Uh, massage hair you may not see how that helps your client to earn more money but if you're working on prefer professional women do you think they show up differently after you give them your valuable service do, do you think they walk in another level of courage and confidence after your valuable service if you're a massage therapist if you're a nail tech do you think they're more prepared for whatever it is they're doing out in the world that earns them more money yeah this is where you guys got to understand your value you got to understand your value in the marketplace, right? <clears throat> and so that's my take on today. Wanted to ask you guys if in time while we're talking, you guys can think of what freedom means to you. Put it in the comments if you come back on the replay and you're like, you know what? I know what freedom looks like to me, Daniel, right? And you love to get some support in protecting it and fighting for it, right? And when I say fighting, I don't mean like it's so hard, right? A lot of times the fighting is what we do in the mind. So I've created mindset tools that I'm going to take my clients through at the retreat. That's going to shift them while they're there. The transformation will happen 
right there. And they're going to step into new spaces of possibility. And I invite you, if you um, have been sitting on the fence and you know I'm looking for a new level of freedom, I don't want to do it this way anymore. Join us. August the 3rd through the 5th, the 3rd is, uh, the 3rd through the 5th is VIP. It's twelve ninety seven for that opportunity. Um, there are no classes on the 3rd, but on the 3rd, you get an elite mini brand photo shoot. Many of you need new photos for the external parts of your brand. There are four spaces left for uh, the VIP. And then the premium tickets are only nine ninety seven. dollars Guys, it's like $500 a day for getting your entire life. Um, lunch and dinner is included by Private Chef. There are still some installments where you know you can pay weekly up until that time or you can pay the one-time fee. www.strategicleadershipgrowth.com www.strategicleadershipgrowth.com Does anyone have any questions while we're on, I was trying to see if I could, um, anybody have any questions? I'm trying to see if I can put it in the comments really quick. And then I'll go back. I just saw a comment. I'll go back and read that. Of course, my hand is hitting everything but that. I think that's the correct link. If my hand didn't hit the wrong thing, I'll come back and, and put it on. But for those of you who are joining us and you're wanting to stay at the host hotel, we have a block of rooms. August the 9th, no, July the 9th is the last day to get the promotional rate. Of course, you can stay anywhere. You can still stay at that space, but you will not be able to get the promotional rate for um, the hotel after August the 9th. Uh, Listen, guys, freedom is not something that just happens. You do have to fight for it, and then you get into the space where you have measures of freedom in your life. And it doesn't have to be the way that, that you think it has to be. Freedom is, is how you decide that it's going to look in your life and your business, and you have to give yourself permission. Um, you got to fight for it. You got to protect it, right? You got to really fight this thing up here, the fear that keeps you from making the next move that's actually going to cause you to step into a new space, show up differently, um, become the next version of you. Many of you, your investment to the retreat is going to change who you are because you're going to step into a space of expansion. You're going to step into that next version of who you are and the information you receive after the investment is going to give you what you need to align with becoming the person that can really step into that next measure of freedom for your life and your business. Um, any questions? So uh, Letitia says, spending more time with my family and, and going on a real vacation. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And so when we think about, for many of us that, you know, it's ideal to be able to spend more time with our family, that was huge for me. It was how I began to create new measures of freedom and even when I was a stylist I was like look I don't have to work these hours so I figured out new strategies that would still provide me the income many of those strategies were hiring a team and most people are afraid to hire a team because they're thinking about the expenses but the, the team supports the business to earn more revenue and give you more time freedom and it, it's not going to happen the other any other way it's just not going to happen. You're either going to put in more work or get support in some measure. And I think we all need measures of support in our life and in our business. And that's why I've created the Full Circle Experience. I love the way I'm able to help my clients um, through through my brand. Uh, Letitia says, this has been awesome. So many of us are wanting to spend more time with our family. And when you work for yourself, you can spend as much time as you want with your family. But are you going to earn the money that's going to help you to hold it down? That's what you need the answers to. Because many of us, we take off, we go do things with our family, right? Or we go to their school events or whatever the case may be. But the revenue, still earning the revenue is the thing. And that's what I'll be teaching my clients to do 
um, at the retreat and, and going on a real vacation. Guys, do you know how much we've been conditioned to think? And I'm telling you, this is where, where I was. Well, I wasn't here, but this is what situation I was in previously where one vacation a year. I mean, before, um, when I was single and uh, didn't have children, man, I vacation all the time. So it, it was a little shift for me to feel like I could only go on one vacation a year. Who says we can only go on one vacation a year? Who says that? Who made that rule? Right? But if whatever we believe is how we're going to set our life up. So if we believe we deserve one vacation a year, then we're going to make plans for the one vacation a year, which normally doesn't require us to become the next version of ourselves. It normally doesn't require us to earn more income or revenue. It doesn't require any of that because we've already set our life up for that one vacation. Who says... And I, this is nothing against what you're saying, uh, Letitia, because I don't know how many vacations you go on or one just may be ideal for you. Remember, I said um, freedom is whatever freedom is to you. But when I realized that many of the things I was desiring was on such a small level that I really didn't feel like I was living life. There was so much more of life to explore. And it was simply a matter of me positioning myself differently and showing up differently so that I could place that value in the marketplace and actually earn the revenue that allowed me the freedom. Most of you are building a business not because you want to earn so much more money, but because you want new levels of freedom in your life and your business. For some of you, new levels of freedom will allow you to get out of toxic relationships that you're staying in because you don't feel like you can afford to do it on your own. And I'm going to end with that. You guys have a super, super amazing day. There's a part two there's a part two. I'll come on tomorrow. I'll make an announcement. Um, it's part two of freedom. And you got to decide what freedom really, really looks like to you. If you come on, you enjoy the broadcast, you come back on the replay. Um, let's have a conversation in the comments. I'll communicate with you and make sure to share the broadcast mm -hmm. out. And also um, tap the screen for hearts. Show a little love if you find value. In, in what I shared this morning. You guys have a super, super amazing day. Enjoy uh, the rest of your fourth. If you're spending time with family, whatever it is that you're doing. and But while you're doing it, think about what freedom looks like to you. For me, I was tired of the tradition. I was like, is this what we're going to do every year, all the time? Like, this is, not, this is not ideal for me. This is not what freedom looks like to me. Traditionally, having to do it this way. Um, it was such a blessing to me. I, uh, my mother and my daughter... Uh, my cousin, who's like a sister to me, and I went to um, Florida for about 10 days Chris, during Christmas time. It was something I'd always wanted to do, but getting my spouse at that time to agree with it, it was like pulling teeth. And I just was like, I'm going. Like, who says you got to do Christmas at the house with all the family? Y'all eat, get like super, super full. Then everybody go back home and go to sleep and eat another plate. Who says that's how you have to spend it? See, this is what freedom is when you begin deciding what freedom looks like to you and you move outside of the box and outside of all of the tradition and you actually create the business and lifestyle you really love. For those of you, join me. Strategic Leadership Growth Retreat, August 3rd through the 5th. It may be a sacrifice for you, but it will be one that you will get a return on your investment. You'll step into a new space of freedom. It may mean saying no to something else so you can say yes to creating a bigger future. www.strategicleadershipgrowth.com